today. It's about the new BMW 3 Series facelift here on Autogefühl with Thomas. We know that SUVs are on the search, but the BMW 3 Series or the BMW 3er, as we say in Germany, BMW 3er, listen and repeat. <laughs> it's still one of the core models. Over a million pieces sold in this G20 generation. That's really a lot more than ever before in this time period. Here, the facelift, special thing already in the front. The kidney is wider and also forms one unit here, one transition with the headlamps, so a wider stance and a more seamless design. Before you had this notch here, this is gone to me. This is now more beautiful. We have the sporty M Performance model for you today, the M340i. We'll soon also show you different stylings, but here this M Performance model has this mesh double kidney and also in the extended shadow line, this also for here an option, you can get it in black, otherwise it would be in this matte, matte gray style. Headlamps, LED standard, optional and adaptive LED and when you go for an M Sport line or the M Performance model here, the lower part also has this sporty graphic here and also here then for a stronger look. And this color here is the famous frozen gray. I really love the matte paints. Yep. Mm, good boy. And here you can see the contrast, the M Performance kidney with this mesh and this one here with the white vehicle. This is the base kidney already with the sporty design, black inside rather these vertical fins and then the matte frame around. Again, for this one you could also have the extended shadow line with the black kidney frame, but this one here to me looks a little bit more elegant. Here you can also see in these adaptive LED lights the blue accentuations. They are darkened then out with the M Performance model, but this one here already has the M Sport line. That means in the lower part M Sport and the M Performance model have the same sporty styling. The length for well, how meter 71 or 185 inches that hasn't changed what has changed is standard now black frames around the windows right here so far it was an option with the shadow line now it's standard but you can depick it and still go for a chrome style if you prefer a more elegant styling then with the shadow line when you go for that one you have here the black mirror caps m sport of the M Performance model, I have the M badge right here. They ditched 16 inch wheels, now 17, 18, also standard for the M Sport, or option 19 inch wheels. You can see them also right here. The sedan has the more classic line here, of course. The estate is still available, soon going to show you that to you. And here, the Hofmeister King is a design element right here, used both exterior and interior from past coupe models. Designed by Hofmeister, that guy. And that's so it's very interesting heritage also in a modern vehicle. Design lines here see that the second one evolves right here and then leads over to this rather strong rear. In the rear, the tail lamps have a beautiful three dimensional design. Overall, a very consistent design here. The 340i is, of course, a little bit more screaming out, for example, in the top part here with additional lip here. You can either get it in vehicle color or in the contrasting color, both possible. Here, the M Color 340i. This is the six cylinder model. In the US, you can get it rear wheel drive only as well. Otherwise, in Europe, for example, it's only available with all wheel drive. It has so much power, you know, only the Americans can control it rear wheel drive, right? <laughs> yeah, interesting decision by BMW, isn't it? Then, in the lower part here, this, this diffuser style, really strong. And <whistles> Audio Crew Fake Exhaust Police is here for the Fake Exhaust Alert. Well, hmm, on the inside, well, the air does go through, but the outside tip, it has no real transition to it. Um, yeah, so this is a more honest design for the four cylinder models. Suspension wise, a base 3 series already has standard dampers, but they have kind of these hydraulic cushions that they are also somewhat progressive. Here, then, today in this vehicle, the optional adaptive dampers. They are an option both for the base model and also for the M Performance model. If you go here for the 340i, the M340i, both standard and also the adaptive suspension is stiffer each. And here we have the sedan in Brooklyn Gray. It's also a very interesting color, also with 19 inch wheels, M Sport line, and also here with the black double kidney, a nice contrast. So, yeah, very striking design in this case. Do you like this one best? And the 3 Series is still available as the Touring here also in the facelift. In Germany, even more Touring than Sedan are being sold. In the US, the Touring is not available. And here, once again, the base model also gets the black frames. Again, you can also depick it, then more of a chrome look. 
M Sport line, in this case also 19 inch wheels and the minimal white color. So also a very nice contrasting styling between white and black. Would you actually prefer the Touring, the estate model over the Sedan or the other way around? Tell me in the comments. And if you want to even top up the game, put it even sporter here, the M Performance parts. And for example, here with carbon fiber around the double kidney. Yeah, a little bit, I must, I must say, pathetic fabric towing hook in the front. I mean, you shouldn't need that. That means that you're often, you know, running off track or something, <laughs> isn't it? And of course here, usually not available from works, but then for the performance parts, 20 inch wheels, really massive for a three series. What do you think? I would like to know your opinion. Is this one here then too much for a three series? Also with a carbon fiber roof and so on. I would say the M340i or M Sport line is still elegant sporty. This one maybe a little bit too much. Or what's your take? I really like the Alcantara steering wheel from the M Performance parts though. And here the M top cover for the window knob. That's very interesting. And you can even decide if you want to see the M in the right order or if people from the outside are supposed to see the M. <laughs> Car key, when you have M Sport or the M Performance model, you also have the M colors right here. Then keys entry would be putting the finger here on the outside to close it, or the hand on the inside to open, to open it. There we go, and door closing sound. Yeah, that's a nice door closing sound indeed. Inside of the door, also nice soft materials being used. Then this one also features the Harman Kardon sound system. It's a very nice option indeed, good for music lovers. This then with the Sportia M interior. It looks the same when you go for M Sport or the M Performance model. These are the animal skin seats, but soon I'm going to show you a you know, wide variety of different seats where you can go animal free and they have good new choices there indeed. Well, let's get inside. As for the seating comfort, yeah, you've seen already the news here. Soon going to show all the deals about that. This curved screen layout, this is new with the facelift. Soon a detailed shot to that. Here inside, typical sedan seating position. I wouldn't say it's best in the segment, especially for tall people, 189 or 6 foot 2 with shoes. A lot of headroom left. There's also panoramic roof available. But from the seat ergonomics, I think Mercedes C-Class and BMW 3 Series, not the best for tall people. I more prefer the seats in the BMW SUVs, for example. As for the sedan, for example, the Audi A4 gives me more comfort as for the seating position. Um, yeah, just a quick comparison between the big German 3 competitors. Steering wheel in and out, up and down, very nice and easy, sm uh, smooth process. And this here is the Alcantara seat, Alcantara Sensatec mix. So I have microfiber on the inside. This is really cool because it stays warm in winter and cool in summertime. I would prefer this seat. It's not available on all markets though. In Germany, for example, it is available. So this is also a very nice choice. Also based in for the M Sport in Germany, for example. So either this then or the Sensatec seats. And here we do have the perforated Sensatec seats, here in this case in red, but they're also available in black, beige or brown, depending on the market. They're also available in the US and in the UK and also in the German market. And indeed, here this perforation, they're breathable for that case, then very soft, nice, high quality. BMW, by the way, ensures that they have the same durability as animal skin leather. So they did that in their long-term tests already. And they're also working on further technologies, for example, to put the seats in a 100% recycle, recycling material. And also even further based on plant materials like desert text, so based on cactus fibers, or a so-called myrum seed. There's already a first sample of that. This is also mixed from different plant materials, for example, from natural rubber ingredients. Very interesting. So to make it basically full circle. And from 2023, BMW will also step up the game as for the steering wheel materials. For the first time, you will also get animal-free steering wheels. We already have a sample from a BMW iX steering wheel, and they are also again it is more sustainable, less use of resources. It has the same durability. And it's a very interesting figure, by the way. So if you ditch animal skin leather from the whole interior, you save 85% of the emissions in the car interior. And that is, of course, a very crucial thing. Interior overview. Well, styling-wise, it looks pretty amazing here with this through screen. 12.3 inch on the left, 14.9 inch on the right. But it comes with a catch indeed. Well, 
You still have the manual volume knob. However, the climate unit here, this has gone into the screen, no more real dials. So to me, this is a disadvantage to control while driving. You could also use the voice control, but to me, this is not a real advantage. Here when we power up the car, it changes. For example, temperature 20 degrees. Temperature shots 20 degrees. Interesting. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Change temperature to 20 degrees. Oh, I, I now drive 3,800 kilometers. I'm... I'm cold. That works, for example. But yeah, it shows... I just prefer the real diets, you know, so at least it stays in this position here. Well, you can see here, as for the main infotainment screen, this is here the normal map. It is also actually decently fast, but the OS 8 system, in contrast to the OS 7, has just so much more complexity that you have like a menu overflow, I would call it that way. And to me, it was easier in the OS 7, especially here, you have four, but then the vehicle app is missing. So you have to go here and then either with touch or the no part, live vehicle. And then, for example, you get to the uh, consumption figures and so on. So to me, this is actually too complicated. However, you can always use, of course, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto Wireless. Soon another look at that. And this is the Apple CarPlay integration right here, full screen, really nice. And then the music, Harman Kardon sound system. Yeah, to me, it's, it's really fitting to the whole vehicle, that sound um, has a nice surround character. Yeah, really like it. And as music lover, I would always go for that indeed. So good integration. And what else is cool with the OS 8 is a good advantage that when you use Apple CarPlay and then go to Apple Maps, then you can have, you know, put your address in there. Let's see, um, I don't know, let's go to Berlin or something. Here we go. And as soon as we start the navigation, now we have the advantage. Yes, that's my phone. Don't have too much signal here at this moment. So as we, soon as we start the navigation, we can also have it then on the left side here of the instruments. And here you can see Apple Maps via CarPlay on the right side and also on the left side. This was not possible with OS 7. Remember that here in Apple CarPlay, Apple Maps works right and left, not with Google Maps. When you want to have it that Google, uh, that Google Maps is also on the left side, it's only working with Android Auto. It's not a BMW thing. It's a thing with Apple that they don't obviously allow the interface that Google Maps in CarPlay runs over the left side. But again, Google Maps could appear here when you use Android Auto. And here we have the instruments and yeah, Michelle is allowed to rev it today. Oh yes, Michelle, great. Because I'm sitting right next to him to be able to control here the different uh, contents and so on. There you can have the map um, inside. Here, for example, you can also have the Apple CarPlay maps on the left side. That is possible. That is a big advantage for the OS 8 indeed. And, for example, also assistant systems view that is possible. Or you can change the whole layout like this or like this. Um, yeah, but I think I more prefer this one here. What do you prefer? And head-up display to keep everything in your line of sight. Middle console, I appreciate that we do have alternatives to high gloss piano lacquer, like here the carbon fiber. Then here this console has changed. Well, this is the same, this you know, control knob here to control the infotainment system while driving. Good to still have it. And here this is a new shifting lever. It always comes with eight speed ma eight eight speed automatic gearbox, of course. Yeah, so no manual. But here in this small design, so you have a nicer integration. However, you have no classic sporty feeling. Some might not like that indeed. Driving mode selector and then you have this armrest well attached here and you fold up and then you have USB-C charging now. Rear door of the sedan. Top part is also soft touch. So that's nice, good build quality indeed. And then here, through bench, this has always been the classic BMW rear bench styling, hasn't it? 
it even reminds me of E30 still. Then getting inside, well, one problem is that I don't have too much space here in the rear when tall drivers are present. When you put the seat a little bit higher, then my knees would better fit into this recess. Otherwise, with 189 or 602, it is a problem indeed. Headroom wise, does work for the sedan. It's a little bit better with the estate. I'm going to show that to you very soon. The comfort is actually quite decent, but not too good. Also here for the for the left elbow, there's a very thick area here, thick yaw. So yeah, not too much space here. It is okay, but not more. And also there's the big middle tunnel. Of course, it's a rear wheel driven platform or an optional all wheel drive. So in the middle part, you can sit, but it's rather stiff then from the material also. Not ideal indeed. So what is new with the middle console here, that now you have two USB-C chargers. Here in the estate, you have a little bit more headroom. That's indeed easier. It's more comfortable to sit here headroom wise, even if you're a little bit taller. So it's like, was like this for the sedan and this then for the estate. So here is a significant difference. Trunk for the sedan, 480 liters, bigger now because there's nothing underneath. They are using the full potential, of course. Here have the loading sill and limited in height. Length about a meter of 40 inches and the width here is less. It's, yeah, it's rather here you know, between, we are just like 90 centimeters or 36 inches. The estate, I'm going to show you that right now, of course, has the easier entry to the trunk overall. But for a mid-size sedan, there's actually decent trunk space available. You can fold the seats from here. That's also good here for a sedan. Second release, and then we have to push them from here or from... We have to push them from here. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Um, yeah, and that's actually quite cool then. Now the estate trunk. By the way, from the outside, I think it's really cool that they kept the same light design both for sedan and the estate. Classic with the estate is always that you can have the separate opening of the window here. And just listen to this. Oh, that sounds beautiful. When you really like flip, that's beautiful. <laughs> and then the whole trunk opening like this. And then, of course, you have the even loading sill. That's so much more practical. This cover here, by the way, you can either lift it up like this, but it's not automatic, or then here completely. Yeah, not my favorite solution. Let's take it that way. Let's take out the sample luggage. And you can see between the wheel arches, it's not a meter of 40 inches. That's a little bit disappointing. So that's more like, you know, 90 centimeters then, or 36 inches. It's just wider here. But you can see this would be a meter of 40 inches and we do not reach it between the wheel arches. That's not that good. This is actually quite cool. Here are these rubber pads so things don't slide around. And you have this opening here with some more storage underneath and you know, emergency equipment. And then the top part here. And here you can also store the top cover. That is actually a cool thing. And that's also nice here. That's that. Ah, that's Good build quality. Let's fold that whole thing here. That's also really nicely done. The length here then in the estate. Yeah, this is about a meter of 40 inches in normal length. And then the length to the front seats is about 180 meters or 71 inches. Interesting, of course, also the total height here in the estate. That is the big advantage here about 70 centimeters or 28 inches. As for engines, let's lift the hood here. This is the inline six cylinder, really cool, three liter of displacement, 374 horsepower, the top engine here beside the true M3, of course, M performance model. And just over four seconds in the acceleration figure, the orbit of model is a little bit quicker than the rear wheel drive model. Overall, ranging from 150 horsepower, that's the entry level engine, both petrol and diesel, four and six cylinders, and of course, also plug-in hybrids. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge, BMW M340i. We'll put it to the Sports Shifting Mode. I also put it to the Sports Dynamic Mode. This would be not necessary, but it was necessary to put the Traction Mode to ESC Sport. And then we can also induce a launch control here. Hit the brakes, don't do it like I am high patrols. Let's go. Well, there we go. This was even allowed to have the speed here, but again, 
please don't repeat. <laughs> so that was the acceleration. The figure is actually 4.1 seconds in the US and 4.4 seconds for the European model. So depending on the market, wow, it's really, really impressive. Very cool with the overdrive drive model. The rear drive model is a little bit slower. So, but you can remember around four seconds. Really impressive. And this inline six cylinder, three liter, yeah, just gives such a great feeling overall. This is really awesome. Of course, when we stay on the road now, I put DSC2 on completely. In the sports mode, the adaptive dampers give a little bit more feedback. Also, the steering gives a little bit more feedback, but that's one thing they still haven't fixed with the facelift. I think the 3 Series needs more response from the steering. I think it is a little bit too loose, too light. Even the BMW SUVs are totally fine. Recently had the ride in the X7 facelift. The big BMW SUVs have a better steering feeling than the 3 Series, which should be the benchmark for BMW steering. Yeah, I don't really get it. I don't understand, but yeah. I mean, it is okay to control and you can drive it in a sporty way, but it just lacks steering feedback. When I'm in the comfort mode, it's even lighter. So I would probably go with the individual mode and then make the steering feedback always as stiff as possible. Yeah, as stiff as possible. You got that. <laughs> and then maybe put um, the suspension to a more comfortable node or something. And as for the suspension differences, indeed, when you're in the comfort mode, this adaptive suspension gives you a very nice comfort, even though we are here in the M performance setup. In the sport mode, you have everything spiced up steering wise also for the throttle input and the dampers you feel this you know you just feel more of the road and for longer comfortable rides or something that's not really necessary but when you want to go on sportier rides of course that's cool so you have this flexibility here and the base dampers of course also do fine however i would not pick the m performance model or the M, M Sport then with the stiffer dampers without adaptive. So either go base, base, if you want to save money. And if you go for an M Performance model, then I would also go for the adaptive dampers because they have the sport set up each. And then it's good to have the adaptive dampers to get more comfort out of these than by, by this. With the overdrive, of course, you have a little more safety in winter when accelerating and so on. Otherwise, the rear drive model is a little bit more fun. You can get that in the US here for this model because you can just push it out of the corners a little bit nicer. However, it remains with a rear wheel bias, so that's then not too big of the problem. Still, I would like to get this one here also in Germany, not only in the US. As for the facelift changes while driving, of course, it's about the infotainment system as well. Well, the instruments are very well visible. I really like them. I preferred a little bit the easier, more classic layout and setup in the pre facelift model, but this is to me also totally fine. Yes, that one big advantage that for the Apple Maps or Android, um, or with Android Auto, also Google Maps, you can also get it in the left side. That's also a cool advantage. Other than that, I mean, the map here is also very well to read and it looks cool here, this, this whole setup. But while driving, I would like to you know, control the climate units as well a little easier. Doing that here is somewhat okay, but then vent strength is not possible. So I either have to leave it at, at the vent strength or go for the AC auto mode. And then the strength of the vents is also adapted automatically. So you have to decide for something then there. To me, this little bit step backwards. Um, yeah, but so it's, it comes indeed with pros and cons, as I said earlier. Driving wise, if you compare it also to the competitors, Mercedes C-Class or Audi A4, um, this one here, the BMW, always has the sportiest note, especially here as the M340i. Um, it would be comparable to the Audi S4 or S5 or then also the Mercedes C43. And there, of course, the Mercedes has also a sportier note. Um, for tall drivers, as for long-term comfort, I would go with the Audi A4, Audi A5, best seat ergonomics, together with the Volvo, by the way, with Volvo S60 or Volvo V60. They don't have the sporty, um, you know, corresponding models, however. Um, and how they feel in general? Well, the C-Class is 
quite narrow also from the cockpit here the, our, the BMW gets close to that and the Audi has the widest cockpit I would say in, in, in that case you can move around um, quite freely in, in there the BMW the thing is that it already feels sporty even as the base model and not only here as the M340i noise insulation so far we've been driving like this one kilometers so or 60 miles an hour and it's a very good noise installation is really silent in here so indeed from this whole premium approach this one does feel premium indeed also while driving both comfort suspension how easy it is to control um, there's no body roll or something not at all and then you can understand why it's still one of their most popular cars and even if you don't use the launch control just normal sport mode for example you can always enjoy a very nice acceleration you know from that red traffic light you're just waiting you know until it turns green and this inline six cylinder always you know, really rewards you with a nice sound there we go Plop, that was already zero to 60 kilometers now oh yeah plop, 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 plop. really nice plop 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 from the exhaust as well yeah that definitely brings emotion and I mean when you let it run at a very low RPM pace then it's actually quite silent you know so when you have more oh, this is really beautiful in this case then it pays <laughs> it pays off when you uh, when you haven't gone electric yet um, let's see if they maybe also introduce these sounds at a later stage for the i4 or something like this so as for the fuel economy here with the um, six cylinder it is a little bit worse than with the four cylinder um, when you keep it at the minimum pace but you can also drive this one here with some seven liters or more kilometers minimum that would be even like some 30 plus mbg us or 40 mbg uk but that's the best consumption figure usually when you also have a little, some fun with it it's more like nine liters on one kilometers and then you're of course more like in the 25 mpg region us and uh, like 35 something um, mpg region uk that is a more realistic figure than for for this engine interesting is that with the new os8 there are more and more software updates coming so they do over the air stuff <laughs> i just want to say over the air yeah <laughs> sorry about that so <laughs> Kids are watching as well, so we keep it. Um, so when you go to the different driving modes, here for example, sport mode, it has this, you know, like, hey, we're in the sports mode, visualization, looks quite fancy. And you've maybe been following also what I said in the X7 review. So BMW is also watching our reviews, and also watching your comments, your reactions to our videos, because our videos are also somewhat like a benchmark in the industry. And we said that it's actually a bad idea to go in a different driving mode and then you manually manually have to go back to the GPS and so on this is a big problem so now it switches back automatically see here I said sport mode there we are and it switches back again and also for example when I go to the comfort mode it has more this um, Canyon style with a road uh, road trip style something like this and this is a very comfortable thing to do so you see this nice visualization, but then it's also gone again and you don't have to manually switch back to the GPS. So this is a good thing here with the new infotainment system with over the air updates that they can improve things when they see some customer feedback or I haven't, I haven't mentioned it yet in this review. So that's about controlling the climate unit while driving as well. Yes. Okay. Plus minus for temperature. I can live with that. But then for the vent strength, if I'm not in the auto mode, I have to do it like this. But what's now new, you can deactivate the AC function see here while driving it's also not the best thing to do but if you don't want it less humid in the vehicle if you want to have you know better air to breathe in that kind of respect and you don't need the AC functionality then you can also turn it off it was before they would say hey we want to make things easier and that's also a good thought in general but then a lot of customer feedback here on our channel came as well saying and I also said like mm, I, why not offer this option still you know you don't have to use it but still for those who want to use it they can use it then then they all thought about it and a couple of months later now they did this software upgrade and it's possible again so that's actually a cool thing I really like about the 3 series that it always feels so sporty but it's at the same time very comfortable it can do both indeed 
the only really thing I criticize is, yeah, new OS 8, I like climate knobs, and also then the steering should have, you know, more, just more resistance in there, you know, and I'm not sure if that's even a hardware problem of the of the 3 Series or so on. It was there since the beginning of the, this generation, and I don't know, maybe it's that the focus of this car is meanwhile also the Chinese market, that they maybe think it's not so important for them or so, but especially for European customers, it's a very important aspect, the steering wheel, and of course also for um, for all the US customers, especially, you know, when you're watching this, you're probably a car enthusiast, and this should be also very important to you. Assistance systems, you can see it here on the steering wheel, and these are not hashtag capacitive BS buttons, glad. It's also an advantage if you compare it to the Mercedes C-Class in that respect. Here we have, ah, okay, that's the, was that, that the um, steering, the active steering was deactivated. And um, distance to the car in front of me is being kept. You can also follow that in the head-up display, for example. And then there's also the active steering. Here, when you see the green steering symbol in the middle instruments, then it is active. And here, very smooth intervention. It's not oversteering, overcooking it. Basically, here, you're not supposed to keep your hands off the steering wheel. Just doing it for testing purposes now. So here, not too hectic movements. Overall, smooth. There weren't so distinctive lines even visible. So that's actually also a very nice thing to have. Yeah, but the 340i, of course you can drive it comfortably, but it still always wants to be pushed at some point. Well, and that's why we put it to sports mode. Ah, an accelerated out, German Autobahn, motorway here, 180 kilometers an hour, still super silent on the exterior, that's really cool. The only thing is we can hear the great exhaust. So traffic today, but at least we could accelerate it out to once more, wow. This is the great thing about the M340i with that six cylinder. Yeah, the four cylinder, as I said, it has less consumption, but this one here just brings more emotion. And it's always cool also to do some lane changing, for example. The agility of this car is really amazing, and the reaction is also cool. So, yes, the steering is sporty, but wow, that works very cool. And it always stays upright. That's really, really nice. When the road is even here, that surface, by the way, is also not uncomfortable in the sport mode or something. But of course, if you seek more comfort, you just go to the comfort mode. Then the exhaust is also a little bit more silent and you can also drive fast in the comfort mode. That's actually no problem at all. So this car indeed feels at home in the city, feels at home in the countryside and also feels at home on the motorway. And once again, if I compare it to the competitors, uh, seat ergonomics could be a little bit better. I think the Alcantara seat already helps, or you can also go for base ferric seats, for example, or the new perforated center stack. The new perforated center stack is also a little bit softer than here, the animal skin surface. This will also increase the comfort. And one of the direct competitors is the Mercedes C43. Tune in there, or maybe, Going a little bit bigger with the BMW 5 Series sedan, check it out.